Welcome to Canada's Social Changemakers. My name is Justin Douglas, and today we're here with Dominique Poliquin, Montreal-based filmmaker and activist, to discuss his movie Forces, which recently won the Imogen Nation Award Jury Prize for Best Short Film, his Heritage Minutes, and his upcoming documentary, Moomba's Memory. Will you marry me? On July 20th, 2005, the Civil Marriage Act was adopted in Canada. Now, same-sex partners can marry legally. Love comes in many forms. His parodies of the Canadian Heritage Minutes first threw him into the public eye. Historica Canada, the foundation behind the series of these one-minute short films, even sponsored him on their website. And so you started with just doing uh, two men. Uh, you were in, in, as we've seen, you're in it with uh, Charlie David. Yeah. And then that came out first. And then you were able to make a lesbian version. My concept was to show something profane becoming something pure. Mm -hmm. And it was like in the glass ceiling because in Italy last year you had two nuns who just got married. Yeah, and it's a good example of cinema sometimes is in advance on human rights and human rights development yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Why did you feel it was so important for Canadians to, to have this as part of our history? It was our duty to to play that role to show that other countries could afford to do it too. Forces tells the story of an intense bromance between a gay football player and his best friend, a straight soldier. The characters' houses are separated by a river, so you have two shores, two different worlds. As a director, Dominic likes to play with symbolism and stereotypes. Because Forces explores a lot of uh, masculine identity, culture, football, military, these things that we sort of associate very much with masculinity. So why was that a particular interest of you? I used to train in a military gym and I based my straight character on my friends that uh, I made there. There were a lot of those friends who were having a hard time in the army and I felt like I needed to talk about it because here in Canada we don't talk much about um, the forces and even in Quebec it's worse we don't talk about it uh, at all at all because French Canadians they're not proud of army your activism around film at this point has really been around uh, queer and gender issues but that's not the only kind of movie stuff that you know yeah so uh, what's I well I know that you have another one coming up that's pretty interesting and follows a little bit of a different theme so do you want to talk about that one a little bit it's called the Mumbas memory and it's about the first gorilla that we have brought here in Canada. And he has a really special story because he has been raised by a housewife in Granby for two years. So Wait, sorry, the gorilla was raised by a, a mother yeah. in, the, in, his ho in her home? Yeah. For how many years? Two years. Okay. He went to the Granby Zoo and he was like the ambassador of the zoo and he was really popular among the French Canadians and the tourists. He became the second oldest gorilla in captivity in the world and at his death uh, they have naturalized him, they have taxidermied him. Mm -hmm. So it's an animal that we have humanized and then we have objectified him. So my goal with my documentary is to give him back his soul to tell his story that people don't know all the complexity of it. Mm -hmm. It's looks super fascinating and I'm keeping my fingers crossed that you get everything you need to get the documentary out as soon as possible. Thanks to Dominic, I've been able to watch the early editing of Mooba's memory. Prepare your tissues, folks. It's a real tearjerker. So you're obviously actively engaged in LGBTI, queer issues, uh, animal rights, all sorts of activism type stuff. Why do you feel it's so important to be an activist as well as a filmmaker? It's because if my stories were not told by others, I would not have to tell them. And I want to see those stories alive on the screen. It's really I'm passionate about them and there's no other choice. Some people, uh, there's all kinds of filmmakers who do all kinds of things, but their activism isn't necessarily a central point of that. And so it's really interesting to see you bring your passion and your activism into the filming because it com comes across in your work and it's really impressive. Uh, so you're doing now a working on a full length film that's still sort of in the early processes Correct. of development. Uh, do you want to give us a little sneak peek at what uh, to expect down there? 
Yeah, so it's the book After by Francis Chalifaut. So we are adapting it for the screen with Louis Philippe Rochon, that you know. I do know, very, yeah. We just did an interview with him. The film, you're at this point in the stage of writing. Yeah. So, but it seems like all of your, your topics still have a very strong human connection or, or humanitarian connection, which is really interesting. It's the, the limits of attachment and memory that really uh, resonates with me. And I can see that those themes in every of my work. And for after, it's about a teenager who is haunted by grief itself after mm -hmm. the suicide of his father. And it sets in Montreal and Toronto. So, oh, wow. It's yeah. great. I liked it that you're focusing so much on bringing Canadian stories to life. Because that's what sort of one of the things that I maybe scream about too much in my interview series is recognizing our own talent as Canadians and trying to tell our own stories. So, for me, it's really exciting to see somebody doing that and doing that really well. So thank you very much for thank coming. You. And it's been an absolute pleasure. My pleasure.